Do you want? Can you tell the LBC story? Because yeah, they're that's gonna where get, I, they're going to get sued. Yeah, well, they're being sued. So you know, because you had a you, your show was big. Yeah, man, it was. Uh, so I'm very proud of these two shows I've got now. I mean, that's Radical is uh, sponsored by Odyssey, mm -hmm. and I've got Warrior Creed sponsored by Get, and I've got my Substack newsletter, Radical Dispatch, which is doing really well. In fact, uh, I mean, it's it, it's. It's a, it's the highest earner at the moment, the Substack, right. you know. Um, well, that's a good thing when you got cancelled yeah, like that. That's right. People people supported me, but and I'm very grateful to people, and that's the love, you know. They're showing the love back. Mm. But the LBC lot, and the thing is, what really winds me up, and this is you're going to understand because I think I suspect that politically you're going to sympathise with what I'm about to say. You can't you can't make a fucking show about being all pro minority voices and all like let's platform marginalized voices and let's make sure that we're being anti-racist and all that bullshit that they speak here when you recognize that ethnic minorities in particular have been experimented on medically throughout history like so, so the african americans and the tuskegee experiment is a famous example but more specifically with vaccines and more intimately the cia in pakistan my second home country my parents country of birth you know i've got cousins and uncles and aunties that still live there like this is very real yeah the cia conducted a fake hepatitis b vaccine program on children in their hunt for bin laden when we know that as a recent example of national securitization of the health industry to achieve national security objectives we know that and it's a very real and intimate example of what happened and let's not forget in a field I was very, very instrumental in, in setting up, which was the counter extremism industry for governments. I mean, I pretty much, you know, we founded that through Quilliam, yeah? And you're going you're gonna to manipulate all of that good work and the health sector to deceive children and take their DNA. And then who knows where that data is being stored, right? And weaponize it in your hunt for, on, on your counterterrorism objectives. You're going to weaponize the health data, which, by the way, is what Hitler did right? Hmm. Weaponized health for national security, his version of national security. Yeah. The principle is what matters that he did that in principle. And these CIA did it in principle. They weaponized health in pursuit of a national security objective with children as the innocent victims. So now your LBC and the parent company global, and you make a big deal about being conscious about ethnic minority tragedies, right? And histories and marginalized voices. And I'm there saying, right, here's this story about the CIA. This is reported by Vox, by the way. Again, I mentioned it on Rogan as well. And, and he put up the slide. You can, yeah, we saw it. We yeah. saw your receipts. Right. So it's there, right? So it's not like it, we're not making this up. Mm. Now, I'm in, a, I'm in a company that claims it exists to allow people like me to speak in that way without being censored, right? It claims that, yeah, for too long, ethnic minority voices haven't been heard about their experience. So now I'm on this national primetime show on the UK's largest commercial radio group getting half a million listeners on a weekend lunchtime when people should be having their Sunday roast or drinking their Bloody Marys on a Saturday, and they're listening to this show. And you're telling me that I'm safe. I can speak my mind because you're here for me, yeah? And then that's I, how you built your audience. That's right. And that's what they kept telling me. that. That's what they told me, that, yeah, man, we're going to support you. You know, we understand this is specific. And, and I, so I'm on air and I'm saying, listen, first of all, I've been jabbed against my will in prison. And I know that you guys, CIA, you know, security industry have done this to children in Pakistan. You've weaponized the health sector for your national security objectives. So I'm not buying this. You can't tell me that you're going to force people to be jabbed or they get sacked, which is the no jab, no job policy, and that I can't ask questions, basically. That's it. That's what it comes down to. Because we've been abused in the past. How do I know you're not abusing this again? Why should I trust you when that's what you did? Trust the system. Oh, Go and tell that to those Pakistani kids that had their DNA taken. Like the, the Taliban started blowing up vaccine centers after that. That's what it does. In reality, physically, that's what it does. You ended up, that's why the Taliban blow up vaccine sent, um, deployment in Pakistan and Afghanistan. That's why they do it, because that got exposed. The CIA has, by the way, admitted doing it and has apologized. So, you, so imagine, right, you do that, and then you come into the same people and saying, trust us. Fuck off. I mean, I don't trust you. You have to justify yourself. Who do you think you are? You have to justify why I have to believe you. Otherwise, fuck off. Because I know what you did in Iraq. There are no weapons of mass destruction there. So, a lot of oil. 
Exactly. So, so that that is the stance I took. And by the way, why be, while being double jabbed? Uh, Lim, help, help us understand how yeah. uh, something like LBC works because I've only yeah. ever been independent. Uh, you you know have producers and researchers, yeah. but is there like a hierarchy? You talk about the like this is this is the agenda of shows are going to be making this week, or can you just turn up with your mic and just present and they accept? So it? I did what I'm doing here. I just would go in and speak. Okay. But other people probably, I don't know what other people did, but they probably prepared, they had notes and they would speak to the editor. But I would, from the beginning, I was very clear, like, I know what I want to say and I know how to do it, right? So let me just do my job. And they did. And that's how we built up those listeners. Did they give you any soft warnings first? Saying, look, we're not sure where you're oh, going with this, budget. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, and, and I told them to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. And that's what, you know, they got rid of me. And um, talk us through, like, it just overnight? So it was, it was a bit of a stitch up. Um, they, they published that tweet out of nowhere saying we're terminating the contract because it was coming to, it's like, he served us well and the contract's coming to an end anyway, we're not renewing it, which was bullshit because that was in January, I had a contract, they know this, I had a contract, the existing contract they said is ending soon was all the way until the summer, right? And they'd already agreed a new contract, which had already been uh, in emails, agreed to and everything, it was waiting my signing and I was away for Christmas. So it's all bullshit, they're lying. And they know they're lying. They all know they're lying and they sit here in front of me, they know they're lying. Well, so, were they under audience pressure? Was it audience pressure? Were they no. under uh, political wasn't, pressure? It wasn't audience pressure. Is that the it? culture so of the So they had the equivalent of radio bots that you see yeah, online, yeah. that was happening, yeah? So there are people paid to call in to do the physical version of a bot, right? Mm. So that's all set up as well. But that's a different thing. That's PR companies again, basically. The problem wasn't that though, because that doesn't lose the money. It's the bottom line, right? What happened was with lockdown, LBC had just bought... Uh, this is a nice inside scoop for you. LBC had just bought all the outdoor billboards. You see these outdoor billboards yeah, with advertising boards? They yeah. used to be called Clear Channel. Clear Channel, yeah. Now they're global. You see global underneath them yeah. all, right? I know the guy that sold it to him. He had dinner with me. He's an Indian British guy, right? After he sold it to them, he was a fan of my show. He sends me an email. He knows this. And he's like, hey, can we have dinner? I love your show. I just sold all these outdoor billboards to global. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. So we had an Indian together. We we're in Mayfair. We were having Cobra beer, right? With our curry. So th this whole story is that they had taken a huge bank loan. This is also reported in the press, by the way, after lockdown, they reported this because their finances are in trouble. They had taken a huge bank loan to finance their acquisition of Clear Channel. Yeah. So that they could, like all monopolistic practices, like all systems, accrue more power. Yeah. They wanted radio and out out outdoor advertising. You see the how that would mm. be a self-fulfilling feedback loop. Yeah. yeah? So they had taken a huge loan to get those outdoor billboards and then lockdown hits. Who's advertising on outdoor billboards? <laughs> no one's outdoors. <laughs> Overnight, their biggest customer became government health warnings. Oh, yeah? okay. So suddenly, you've got a private broadcaster whose biggest customer is government. Again, that happened because of lockdown. No malicious planning. Yeah, mm. It's just how systems work. So now you've got a company that needs to survive and the only people paying it to survive, well, it's got this huge loan to pay off, is the government. So they're paying their loan back to the, to the bank because they've just acquired all these outdoor billboards. And the only adverts going up are stay indoors, stay safe. You know what I mean? So, the opposite of what you were saying. Exactly, right? So in between my show, we'd have these annoying adverts every 15 minutes. I'm saying ignore this bullshit. You know, don't get, don't get uh, turned into tyranny. And then suddenly the break comes and it's like, stay indoors, stay safe. So it was like, it was very yeah. jarring. And so I think at some point, it became of like for the government, it became very inconvenient because they knew the show was being listened to. It was causing a stir. It was the only voice on a, a national platform that was challenging any of this bullshit, but it was challenging it in a very unapologetic way. Very, very direct with all the facts and all the receipts and all the bullshit. You know, we'd put, for example, this thing you said about the cure being worse than the disease. Mm. That's a question that we put to the government. We put, there was a freedom of information request specifically on that point. Has the government done an impact assessment, which is what it was called, on the costs of lockdown versus the benefits? And they had done an impact assessment. They never published it, right? Mm. Then the court orders the government to publish the thing. They had a time limit. They never published it. And the reason they never published it is because it, it showed the obvious that actually the benefits don't outweigh the costs of this thing and more people are going to die because of it than from what you're trying to save. They had that impact assessment. So it was very inconvenient because then there's me every weekend reminding everyone that they've never published, for example, this piece of evidence that they mm. have and that a judge has ordered them to publish. It doesn't look good. You know, and so I reckon at, at one point, somebody probably, and this is never going to be in any email, somebody over, over a drink probably said, listen, have a word. We're paying you a lot of money for these ads and your guys ruin it for us. 
it was, you know, I think the bottom line got affected, basically. So you think this came from someone in government rather than like the commercial director or whoever of LBC deciding that it was like, it, it didn't work? Well, but they would have had a word with the commercial people, yeah. That, so you think it actually came yeah. from government? I mean, this didn't, doesn't work thing is bullshit. I mean, as you see, the, the show was, the, the audience was rising and rising, right? Mm -hmm. We know that. Oh, we, no, I, I, yeah. I totally believe yeah. your show word. I yeah. meant like the juxtaposition of yeah, the show. Yeah, so it would have been someone having a word with the commercial people, but mm -hmm. then but then ultimately, the, also because of speed at which it happened. Yeah. So I get back from Christmas, and as I say, we've got a contract till the summer and a new contract agreed. And the thing is, again, this can all be checked because my agents are JK Rowling's agents. They're not fucking with like little small-time people. They all know this. We've got emails Mm. Right, so we're with the Blair Partnership, right, which is the agency Rowling set up actually, and Neil Blair runs it. He's a mate of mine as well. Um, and we've got all the emails. We're like, "Yep, agreed, contract deal done. We've got it's a new contract, and we're really happy with it." It's all in email, mm -hmm. right? So I get back though, and what happens is I tweeted, "I shall not go quietly into the dark." And my point was, I'm, you, you, you know, I'm not going to stop talking about this, guys, just because you're, you're, you know, you're now signing me for a new contract. I'm not going to just like you can't buy me and you can't threaten me. You know, it's just not going to happen. You got you got to be worse than the Hosni Mubarak's torturers to to try and cow me into saying something I don't want to say. You know, it's just not going to happen. You can threaten me with what you want. So I tweeted that I'm not going to go quietly into the dark. I'm going to continue talking about this because actually most of it is going to come out after you guys are done with this bullshit. That's when you're going to see all the costs of what you did. The people dying of heart attacks. The people with all these adverse events vaccine reactions and all that stuff is going to come out eventually. And I've got to be there to tell those stories. And I think that's when they realize, okay, this guy's in it for the long haul. So that suddenly that tweet came out from them saying, we're, you know, thank you, but we're not going to renew the contract. It came with no warning whatsoever. They're going to get sued. Yeah. They're, they're, they're being sued. So what, an you know? interesting question. Oh, sorry, go on. No, no. I was no, just no, going to say, what, what was the culture like at LBC? Were they, were, was it a purely commercial decision, do you think, or were they against it anyway? Did you, oh, did you have oh, any, yeah, like, yeah, no, allies? They, they were all for, no, no, they were, most of them overwhelmingly were following the, the sheep narrative, yeah. most of them, yeah. Did you have any allies who back you? Or yeah, I mean, like, I don't want to, like, obviously, because some people are still there, yeah, yeah. So you won't get people in trouble. But that's the that's the issue when you start to censor speech in different ways, or where people start to self censor. I, I mean, that's one of the things I, I hate most is once you, was when once you have these mob mentalities and people start to self censor, it's still a censorship. Yep, it's damaging. 